All right. Hello, once again, uh, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me, I have an encore presentation of Lynn Jacob. <laughs> um, Lynn, uh, for those of you who have not seen the old episode, Lynn and I had a chat not that long ago, but maybe a year ago, a little less than a year, I feel like. Exactly, a little less than a year ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we chatted, we chatted before. Um, it was a good chat, so I thought I'd, I'd just uh, invite you back, kind of catch up, see how things have been going. Um, I know um, since we last, since we did our first podcast, I referred a friend of mine over to you, and you've been working with him, so I thought maybe we could chat about some of the wins that you've seen there. Um, but for those who are watching and listening who are not familiar with you and who have not seen our first episode together, um, why don't you just, in your own words, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? All right. Well, uh, as a business performance coach, I was building my own house back in 2004, moved into it in 05. When contract, I started attracting contractors to me to help them with their businesses. So the first one happened to be our Mason contractor. And it was because he said, what is it that you do that you can you know, come and see the property during the day and it doesn't have to be on a weekend or in the evening? And so he said, he, he said to me when he heard, I need me some of that. So he was my first contractor. And then the next one was through BNI, I think. And then the other one was another networking event. And so I was working with ICI and residential contractors. And, and it was because I was coaching everybody one-on-one -on -one at that time. And with these three people, I would ask them, so what's something, what's, what's something you could do differently, like to overcome this challenge? How could you address that in a different fashion? They had no idea. And, and they really had no idea. I could sit there silently holding space for them, as we call it for a day and they would not come up with anything. So, and then, you know, of course, then I could feed them stuff. Like this one guy, I said, uh, I said, so tell me, he's a specialist in, in building on waterfront property in an hour area, there's a ton of waterfront. And so I said, so tell me about these people who come from the big cities and, and you're building their homes for them. Where do you think their lawyers are based? Like far away in the big city or in this city? Oh, no, probably here. Well, when do you think they're seeing their lawyers? On Saturday morning? Mm -hmm. And he thought about it and he said, yeah, I'll bet you there's not a lawyer in town who would see them on Saturday morning or afternoon. He's seeing them on Saturday morning, right? And his wife is not happy. And uh -huh. So anyway, I, I could feed them ideas to think about and see things differently, but they couldn't come up with them on their own because of the nature of the industry and all they'd learn from everybody else. And so anyway, I, I just decided at one point, if I could get these three people into the same room, I could be training them on, you know, my style of business strategies. And then we could get back to the one-on-one -on -one helping them come up with their own ideas as to changes to be made to the way things are done around here, as I call it. And the Trade Contractors Business College was born. And, nice. and that, that's a one on, and not one on one, that's a, an in person gathering. But then it, it got so that it was for bigger contractors. And I was kind of leaving out the littler guys. So then I created Trade Contractors Business Training. And that I did for many years by teleseminar. And now I have just recently resurrected it and I'm doing it by, you know, Zoom video channel, uh, channel. And so that's that's what I do is I train on seven key business strategies that I have dramatically simplified with rubber hits the road, tried and true tactics <laughs> so that when a contractor says, oh, yeah, but it's different, it, it's different for me. Then I ask them, well, maybe so explain and Everybody's especially... a special snowflake, right? Everybody's got their own unique business, except that they and don't. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Exactly. And so then inevitably there would be somebody in the room years ago and still today, you know, in group calls, there'll be somebody say, well, actually I've done that before and it works like she's talking about. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that helps them get out of it. That helps them get out of their stuckness 
when huh. they hear somebody else has done it, because that's what they really put a lot of stock in is somebody else having done it successfully. And yeah. yeah. So I train on these strategies. They come up with their own ideas and then I help them follow through on their ideas. Yeah. Nice. Do you want to, do you want to talk a little bit about the seven tactics? Sure. Sure. I'll go through them very quickly. Uh, the first one is to, is to create a three-year vision. Mm -hmm. The second one is to map out the route to reach that destination. So, Why three? Why three years? Uh, because, well, because 10 years is just way too far out mm -hmm. and people won't do anything. And then they go, oh, it's been like, you know, nine years and, and I've got a year left, you know, and it's still kind of the same thing for five years. Oh, there's lots of time, lots of time. Uh -huh. Three years, there's not a lot of time. Really, uh -huh. they'll get off track. They'll get off track, but they'll get back on track a lot faster because three years is such a short period. Mm -hmm. And and the 10 years, it's funny because when people do these 10-year visions, they don't really have to focus on them when they're working, focusing on the three-year vision. Uh -huh. Then they don't even get like maybe seven years and they go, oh my God, like I've accomplished so much of what I had in my original 10-year Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Because you were working at it, you know, not just three years at a time, but strategy number two, mapping out the route means a one year business plan. And I call it non traditional because you won't take this one to the bank and get them to pay serious attention to you because it includes you in it, uh -huh. not just the business. So, so I actually have helped people create business plans to take to the bank, <laughs> but they start with their non-traditional and then we just take some of the chunks out of it and fill in the blanks for the banks and it works. So sure. then that's the one year down to 90 day goals mm -hmm. and then weekly achievements and reflections review documents are done by my clients weekly. And in it, it's what are the three most important activities or actions I need to take this week mm -hmm. in order to reach my 90 day goals. Mm -hmm. And that's not all they do, just three things, right? And yep. then every day it's the HHWs. <laughs> so come hell or high water, <laughs> I get these three things done before my head hits the pillow tonight. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I actually worked with a guy one day who says, you know, like, I, I don't quite get that HHW and like, I'm, I, I'm not getting the sales results I need, that sort of thing. So that's what we talked about in our one-on-one -on -one that day. Yeah. And, and I just got really clear. So he was getting the training in the group, but he was also investing in one-on-one -on -one as well. And he was hearing it, but until you really step into some of this stuff, you hear it, Yeah. you know it, but you don't understand it. And that's yeah. the name of my book. I know you know, but uh -huh. you don't understand. So I help take everybody across this bridge of awareness from the land of knowledge. They know how to how to run a business. They're in a business. They have a business. They've been running this business for 10 years, you know. So they know and they're in the land of knowledge, but I take them across this bridge of awareness so they get to the land of understanding where they understand how they're sab sabotaging their results. I love that. I think I think that's an important, I think that arguably the most important thing that a coach is, does with any business is bring in that third party perspective, that fresh set of eyes and ears, where mm -hmm. when you're the entrepreneur, when you're the business owner, and you're, you know, you're, you're there every day, you're in the weeds, you can't tell the forest from the trees. Right. You're, yeah. you're, you're in the eye of the hurricane, not to mix metaphors, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's I like so I like yeah. the idea, you know, you're, 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 it sounds like you're, you're taking, you start with this three-year vision of, of where they want the company to go and just reverse engineering down to daily habits. That, that's it, down to daily habits, yeah. Which is the so hell or high water. It, yeah, exactly. So this, this one guy, he says to me, he sent me a message, I think it was like his two o'clock or in the afternoon or something, and he said, my pillow will never have felt so comfy and and smells so sweet as it will tonight because I got them all done. So we had mapped out the week of things that he needed to do in order, to, and then the HHWs from that, and got it all done that day. Because once he got into the routine of it, you know, he just kept the wheels moving, and then yeah. he got there. And of course, the next week when we spoke, 
darned if he didn't have the results he wanted already. Hard to believe. Hard to yeah. believe. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. I, I like that. Yeah. I, I, uh, I've done, I've done similar things and what, what, what really, you know, speaking for myself, I think one of the things that really um, moved the needle for me and my business was figuring out, because there's a lot of programs, I think, that will do, you know, they'll start with a one or a three year vision, then it'll reverse, reverse engineer it down a little bit, but really breaking it all the way down into daily habits, that was the part where when you went down to that level of, of kind mm -hmm. of micro planning, right? Where you, there's, you know, one to three things that you do every single day as a habit. Um, that was where I really started to see the, the needle move at, at Boxer is because you could just, you, you, you know, you don't, when you wake up in the morning, you don't, you're always going to get surprises, right? There's always going to be an email or a voicemail or something that's going to smack you across the face. And you also know what you have to do to get to the next level, you know, by the end of the quarter or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if, if we could plan the perfect day every single day, it'd get a little monotonous, right? right. So we need, that. We need yeah. that, spice, that spice of life, that spice in our business. Yeah. Nice. So um, two, number three is, uh, understand what truly stops you from following through on your own ideas. And, and this gets pretty deep and typically we don't even get close to getting there unless we've been working together for a little while. And we, and I like to get together with people one on one for a half day, just to dig a little and see what it was that happened long time ago that has caused them to not follow through mm -hmm. on certain things today and just by seeing it just by knowing what it is they get so much freedom from it because then I can bring it up I have no emotion about it I can bring it up in a coaching session when they're not following through or whatever you know and then I say oh, yeah, kind of like when you were you know this few years old and that sort of thing and they go shit again yeah but that's okay so now you know so now what are you going to do about it you know nice. but but I have one client right now, just my most recent client just started with me. I can't use all the language, but at any rate, he said, I've done all that self-help stuff and blah, blah, blah. And, and it sounds to me like that's a bit about what you're doing, but you're still like, you know, an expert in the construction industry and we need you in a big way. So just don't come at me with any of that stuff. <laughs> I just like, Hey, okay. <laughs> anyway, he, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Within, within three weeks, I think, I think yeah. within three weeks, he said, so, so he wasn't following through and he was recognizing that and all this stuff. And so then I really held his feet to the fire and I phoned him that afternoon uh -huh. because he made a commitment you know, that he would do whatever it was. So I phoned him by the time it was going to be done. And, and he answered the phone and because he was driving. So he didn't look, he didn't know, but I, he would have answered the phone from me anyway. But anyway, he didn't know why I was calling. So I said, so how did it go? And, well, I didn't do it because, and I said, I don't need to hear your excuses. They're only excuses anyway, you know? And so we had this, this fun conversation so then by the end of the day, I sent him a text message or email or something. Anyway, he emailed me back at one point and this goes over a couple of days, but the last email I got from him said in response to my question, how can I best support you to help you follow through? Not only on this, but all the other things coming up in the seven months ahead. Yeah. And he his response was, and this was two days after you know, my call to him from out of the blue. And he said, as for how you can best support me, I don't know, but you are really pissing me off. So I think that's a good thing. Done. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly. And, it, and we've spoken since then because he had a serious accident in his family and 
that, you know, kind of took him away, but he also was using that as an excuse to not do the next thing that he had committed to do. And so I held his feet to the fire, gave him a few days off, and then I held his feet to the fire on that one again. And he said, God, I love you. You piss me off more every time we talk. <laughs> okay, good. Love it. <laughs> it's not often that you hear those phrases together. Exactly. That's what I said. I said, love and piss me off. And they're in the same sentence. So that's cool. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. So that's that. And that we haven't even gotten together in person in each other's energy, you know, uh -huh. for us, for me to help him see what the event was. It doesn't matter what it was. He uh -huh. had done all this self-help work to know that he's not permitting himself to see what it was. And I said, Maybe you don't need to see what it is. Just recognize everywhere you're stopping. I've helped people like that before too, you know, like we don't need to see it, but they want to. So they do, they do when we get together like that. So that's number three and that's everything. That is, that's the glue of all seven. But then the fourth one is to tame the cash flow beast and get out of your fear of debt. And number five is to become a championship leader to an all-star team. And number six is to help your customers do your marketing for you by leaving them with a wow experience every single time because birds of a feather flock together. And if you're looking for uh, referrals from your customers, from your clientele, they're going to refer to you, people who are just like them. So you want to make sure that you've done a really good job and that you're working with the best people, yep. you know, that you're tolerating anybody who will tolerate you. So you got to up your game. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's number six. And then number seven is get a life outside of the business. Uh -huh. Love what you do and do what you love. Uh -huh. so I help people like not only take vacations, but take experiential vacations where they're not laying on a beach with the business occupying their mind the whole time, you know, do stuff that occupies your mind where you have to be focused on what you're doing, like deep sea diving, for example, one of my clients started with golf after two years told me he really, he hates golf. He doesn't want to take any more golf lessons or anything, but it got him to a level where he now golfs confidently uh -huh. with his suppliers uh -huh. who are gifting him these five-star golf trips, oh, wow. business trips. Yeah. Sure. So the two years, he, he appreciates the fact that he did that. Yeah. But, but then he told me, you know, no, I, I don't want to do this anymore. And so, <laughs> okay, so what else? what else would you like to do for him? This was for him time, you see, because... Yeah. Just, he didn't even, you know, he would show up to family functions with his wife and children. Yeah. But then, then a couple of years later, he'd say, no, no, I wasn't there. And somebody, a cousin or somebody said, I'll prove you were there. And there he was in, in a picture in uh -huh. body, but, but not in spirit. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So what would he do when he wasn't going to do golf anymore? And I sent him away, took him a couple of weeks of research, just, Ask yourself, what's something I've never even thought of before that I might like to experiment with? And here it is, deep sea diving. Uh -huh. And he was sure his wife would never do this, would never agree to him, to never be happy with him doing it because she would never do it. She got her certification, under uh, what underwater deep sea diver certification, sure. like deep, deep, deep sea diving certification before he did. <laughs> because she just had more time and that sort of thing and so now is that, they, mm -hmm. is, is that different from scuba diving like Very. It's, deep okay. sea they go they their biggest vacation and i encourage my clients and this, this comes in number seven uh, well all of this stuff does let's say yeah. because he's anyway it um to take a three week unplugged vacation is what I help all of my clients focus on getting to. That means you gotta you that means you've you've um tamed the cash flow beast. That means you know your numbers in your sleep. That means you have an all-star team and you are a championship leader. 
And Mm -hmm. it means you're following through. So you're doing all these things and that gets you to this three week unplugged vacation. And he was away in total unplugged total, I think four and a half weeks because this trip for scuba diving in the East Timor Sea was after, just after the new year. So they unplugged for Christmas where nobody works in the business during Christmas and New Year's. And then off he and his wife go on this trip five airplanes to get there five flights to get there and fly back and when he lands in his city his wife comes on home and he spends the night in a hotel room because he goes off on a five-star golf trip the next day so he was unplugged all that time (laughs) to the east timor sea and then of course he checks in because he's you know close to home Uh uh-huh and they had their first problem that day when they knew he was coming home. So they yeah. could just, whatever, relax, chill a little, whatever, <laughs> and drop the ball. And and he had it all, but he was calm and cool, and he had it all fixed up, all that he needed to do, yeah. which was talking to the right people. Yeah. Never had the job site, nothing like that. Just nice. And so then I he went golfing for five days or something at a five-star golf resort down south. So, that's yeah. pretty great that's pretty great i had unrelated but i i had talked to my wife a couple times in the past year or so thinking you know i should i should get uh what do you call it a set of golf clubs and and learn how to golf because it would be good good networking for like you know business people local politicians that kind of thing um but now you got me thinking twice about that because i don't really think i would enjoy it i was just it was purely just like a networking play for me <laughs> that's 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 why he did it and look at what it's done it's it's given him the confidence to say yes to these all expense paid five-star trips yeah it doesn't sound terrible it doesn't sound terrible i mean it's such a such a win you know oh Oh my gosh he he just had another unexpected win that was an unexpected win yeah from him from him following through on something he had thought of because he had been a president of the local chapter of the electrical contractors that he was, you know, a member of. And, and he had to, uh, to represent the chapter. He had to go to these golf tournaments and he mm-hmm. felt like a, you know, like a fish out of water. He just didn't like it at all. And so, yeah, so he did this and he and his wife went out and golfed pretty much every weekend in good weather. And he golfed with his father, you know, he, took advantage of having more time with his father. So it was to have a day off every week. It started as Wednesday afternoon and then it became all day Wednesday because, you know, he would, you know, he could only do half day. He could only get away for a half day. This was back when he was thrown in the towel and he had like eight employees and now he owns two businesses and he doesn't really have much to do with the employees Uh except to say hi. When he's taking half Wednesdays off, is he working Saturday and Sunday or is he taking? No, no, no. Yeah. So he was taking, that's all he could afford to take off half was half of Wednesday. And then it became the whole day Wednesday. It was easy to see. I knew a day would be better because is he going to go golfing at seven o'clock in the morning and then want to go back to the, to the office in the afternoon and to get out of the office, you go to the office at seven o'clock in the morning and then you can't get out. And then you're phoning your buddy who's, you know, waiting for you in the club and, and all that stuff. So, so it only took him a couple of weeks to see, Wow! but had to experience the challenge of how challenging it was to take a half day off. And that was back in 08 or 09. Nice. One or the other. And he, um, he, he still takes Wednesdays off. Wednesday is the best day for him because that means that it's, we were trying to avoid Monday morning blues. That's what it was like, like an employee Monday morning blues. Right. And yet he owned his own business, but Mm -hmm. by cutting up the week in Wednesday, that meant that he would have two Mondays or it meant that he would have two Fridays. So he took it as two Fridays. So all about the framing. (laughs) It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. still, Yeah. Still is taking the Wednesday off. He still finds it's the best day, but other people will start on a Friday afternoon, maybe. Interesting. Yeah, Very cool. Yeah. What, uh, what, what else is new with you and your business? Have you launched any new programs or anything like that since we last spoke or? 
Well, this uh, this program, the Trade Contractors Business Training, as I call it, I have launched, relaunched that, but I have launched that. So, so the like, why relaunch? What what does that matter? Well, that matters because it's it's telling people maybe that I did this program for years by uh -huh. teleseminar, by teleseminar. I know how successful it is by teleseminar. Well, it's going to be that much more successful by video, uh -huh. right? By, by Zoom, because yeah. now people get to see each other. They're not just hearing a voice, but they see each other. And already they're sharing, uh, you know, contact. I can, you know, when I'm whatever doing something and, and I can hear that, I'll say, okay, just give me a minute here. And they'll take an opportunity to say, hey, so-and-so, I just sent you a private message. I'd like your contact information because I think we might have some synergy here. Yeah. So that's great, you know? Very cool. Yeah. And that that did not happen much. I think it might have happened once in many years, maybe 10 years or something. I ran it by teleseminar. So it's just the it's the face, you know, you see somebody and, yep. and feel that much more comfortable. No, I, I mean, there's, there's a reason like, I mean, this is a podcast and we'll release this as audio. But right now, like we're recording on Zoom with video. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, when you've you've been on uh kevin's podcast as well which, which is another boxer podcast conversations with coaches um and that one is only an audio podcast but also recorded with video just because it's yeah. it's it's nicer yeah it is it's it's nicer i mean we, yeah we technology <laughs> yeah you know it's the two sides of every coin right every coin has two sides so uh -huh. but the upside on um, on the video platforms is you get to see each other you yeah. know? and when I'm traveling around the world I can still you know tap back into friends or whatever and we get to see each other have a glass of wine together you know we do we'll, we'll get together for a glass of wine or a cup of coffee in the morning yeah. and with my grandchildren you know my my uh, youngest grandchild she just gave me the tour it, it was a two-part tour uh -huh. um of their new home, you know, that they, they just moved into this home that I haven't seen yet. So it was a two part tour. Okay. And that's all I'm going to show you tonight. And then the next time I'll show you the rest. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> How old is she? Eight. Eight. Okay. Right on. Yeah. Right on. I don't know. I don't know if I've told you yet, but I have a one-year-old now. No, I don't remember hearing that last year that yeah, wow, I was thinking about your house that you built off grid and all yep. that stuff last year. So now it's a baby. Wow. We've got a one year old who is who is now walking around and opening drawers. <laughs> she she, uh, she likes to take the shoes from the entryway and put them in the into the, the drawers um, uh, and, the, and the cabinets in the kitchen. That's very important for her. So. <laughs> Cool. That's cool. And has she started climbing yet on those open drawers? She hasn't started climbing yet. No. Um, she hasn't figured out how to open doors yet either. And so I'm, 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 I'm hoping that that lasts a little bit longer because <laughs> as, <soon> as, <laughs> as soon as she can open doors, we're, we're all just, our lives are over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just another stage, but all my right. younger daughter, my younger daughter, when she pulled out drawers and it was, this was in an old house. So those uh -huh. drawers were made of solid wood. And sure. She was just one, just one. And she pulled them out and she knew how to stack them that uh -huh. she climbed all the way up, stood on top of the stove and opened the doors above her head, wow. which made her lean backwards. Oh my God. I came into the kitchen and <gasps> oh. yeah. But, <laughs> those things stick with you for a long time it's uh -huh. the emotion that's oh my gosh yeah so this is these are our memories our memories come with emotion you know you can ask me sure. about other things and it's like mm, yeah no maybe but I don't remember especially my girls you know this is a, yeah. oh, I don't remember yeah. I didn't have the emotion they had the emotion uh-huh yeah but, well, yeah that, it's still with me and she's 43 years old and that one is still with me it's funny yeah. it's funny at that at at this well at this age that my my girl's at she's she's known she doesn't really have she's not really afraid of anything yet 
She she has she has no she has no sense of self preservation because she doesn't know what that means yet. <laughs> she hasn't you know she's bonked her head a few times and she's fallen over while she's walking. So she I means she understands that there are consequences when you trip and fall or stumble or something like that. But that's it. That's all she knows in terms of consequences. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's it's interesting. It's been it's yeah. been a lot of fun. And we don't want them to learn in big, serious ways. You know? right. <laughs> it's you okay. Let's it out. keep it this way. Let's, let's yeah. keep going. We'll figure it out later. Yeah. yeah. You want to meter it out and make sure that it happens as, as slowly as possible. Like, let's, yeah. learn, let's learn these lessons in small doses. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. well, is there... Oh, go ahead. No, what a special time for you and your wife. I, you know, I remember and... Then I had grandbabies and yeah, that was in 07. I had two grandbabies, two daughters, each had a baby within five weeks of each other. Oh, wow. And yeah, I know. And so I, um, I was living two provinces away from them. And that was, that was the fall, October, November of 07 in 08, my, and, and I went through a depression. They came home with me to my province my home newborn newborn babies they shared a bassinet that I had and so they were there for two weeks and then they both left one went to visit the other abuelos in Mexico and the other one took a plane home to her province to where they both happened to live yeah. uh, anyway, so then uh, yeah so then I just I just got so depressed <laughs> that, yeah I did for, for three days I never got to go to bed yeah. Go oh, and, yeah. And it was bad. It was bad. So anyway, I got back. I, I reached out to my coach and I said, look, I know it's Christmas time, all this stuff, but I need help. Uh -huh. So he he helped me. He gave me, you know, an hour of his time in this period sort of thing. And and at the end of this coaching set, it was like, you know, an hour or whatever. And, and he said, Lynn, I'm not feeling like I've really helped you get anywhere. And I said, yeah, me neither. And he said to me, Michael, he said, what is a question you wouldn't want anybody to ask you? Okay. And I remember, like you did, like you just did. I did that. I remember leaning back in my chair and and then I, twi I swiveled around and there was my bookcase I don't know why I guess I was just panning the room or something but I remember my chair turn and and there was my bookcase beautiful antique bookcase and I said oh I would never want anybody to ask me if I'm following the very same seven simple strategies for success on which I train and coach my clients uh -huh. the cobbler's children have no shoes and that was it it was just that just yeah. that and I said just a second and you know I took my headset off from my phone and I go over and I get it and I said I've got the binder sitting on my desk and I'm going to start working on it when we hang up and he said oh my god I feel so accomplished <laughs> because for an hour you have sounded so depressed and now there's life back in back in you and I think he said there's blood coursing through your veins or something <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And th and that that was it. Was it. What a what a, what a question. Yeah, it's almost like I mean it's it's that's a very like that's a very coach that's a coach's question, right? It's like oh. saying it's like saying what you know what secret are you keeping deep down inside? But it's by by phrasing it in the way that he did, it makes it makes coming up with that more approachable. Mm -hmm. perhaps yeah it's not asking me for a secret but i did feel it that's exactly right. what i felt home it's like <gasps> you know it's like oh, oh my god. god you know but yeah. then i like i say i, mu I must have panned the room because i know i was looking and i and i saw you know the bookcase so i whirled right around and it's like why is the bookcase talking to me and then i went oh my god wow because it's right there all i have to do is follow the steps it's all uh -huh. right there and so I did. And so my business plan for 2008, this was December 07 and my business plan in 08. So I, I, I did the first thing is I mapped out three days all by myself, no interruptions and just did it. Yeah. And, and at one point 
I went like bouncing into my into my office and, and uh, sent an email to my daughter and said, book me a flight from this date to this date return. And then the next time I got back to the computer, you know, this is before the days of cell phones being attached to us. And I got back there and it's like, I need more information than that. <laughs> what more do you need? You know, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, anyway, so that was in. And so my 08 business plan was to see those two newborn grandbabies in every calendar month of that year, two provinces apart, but that I would see them in every calendar month. And I aced it. Yeah. Nice. And made, I, I more than, more, yeah, more than tripled my business that year, more than tripled my revenue. Of course, my expenses went up a little with all these flights, but I more than tripled my revenue that wow. year. Because every time, you know, when I was taking a flight, I just kind of, well, somebody has to pay for this. <laughs> huh. Yeah, so, so get a new you, client. Do you, do you, I mean, you, you clearly think that going to visit your, your grandchildren, that had a big part to do with the increase in revenue. Huge, huge. And not only because it was, keeping me invigorated uh -huh. and happy. So uh -huh. my my slogan is fun has never been so profitable. Uh -huh. When you work with me, you'll have tons more fun and you'll be amazed at how the fun causes profits. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that was like, so, that was your number, that was your number seven, essentially. Yeah, get a life. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and in my life, I wanted to see, I wanted those babies, not to see them so much. I wanted those babies to know who I was. I did not want to be a visiting grandmother. Mm -hmm. Somebody who, you know, they, you know, if they came to visit me, they wouldn't feel comfortable in my home or something like that because it's a different home and a different person and, you know, that sort of thing. So no, I wanted them to really know me. Sure. And boy, did we ever. So, and also how did it Im positively impact my revenue? Huh. is because I made that much more of an effort. If I'm going to be spending this kind of money, I made the commitment. If I'm going to be spending this kind of money on myself this year, going down to see those babies, yeah. I need more money coming in to be able to pay. It. So the more, you know, the, the more effort I made to market, network, all that stuff, the more business that came in. I had appointments every time I went to their province. Nice. Every time. I had appointments to visit. Yeah, I love it. Well, we I think we I think we digressed a little bit, but we brought it back in and circled <laughs> it back around. <laughs> well, that's the thing is like you know in in business in business we get you said you know you get up every day with your habits these new habits that you're that you're replacing your sabotaging habits with. Yep. And yet you're going to have a curveball. You're yeah. going to. So you're yeah. traveling down this this road. And if you've ever lived in Belgium, it's the worst there than anywhere I've seen in the world. But there are detours that you don't know about. Well, maybe you do on Waze now. I don't use Waze on my phone, but I don't even drive these days. But uh, anyway, it's just you know, like you might not know of this detour. You know, maybe some cattle got out on the road and it's not uh -huh. Google hasn't found out yet or something. So so you've got to be taken off the beaten path. And you need to know what your destination is so that you can get back on the path that will get you there. There will be other roads to get you back onto the main road. Oh. But on those side roads, you have such fantastically fun experiences. Yeah. 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 Are, you, are you in Belgium now? No, but when I lived in Belgium, they would, they would say detour and then you're on your own. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, there, there's no more, okay, now continue, the detour continues this way or that way. Or, no, it's just detour to the right or yeah. to the left. And then you're there and you don't know where to go if you're not from that little neighborhood and nobody even in all of Belgium knows that little neighborhood except the people who live in it, you know? So, uh -huh. Yeah, it just is <laughs> the worst. I, I was, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to digress again briefly. I was in Lisb I was in Portugal and went to Sintra uh outside of lisbon which is this old uh it's a small area with an old moorish castle um and we were i was hiking around there by myself I was just kind of backpacking through 
uh, through Europe at the time and was uh, ended up spending about half the day with a with a Belgian guy. Um, and uh, I don't remember. I can't remember his name, but he, I remember him. I remember the day and the time we spent and just like talking and he was just a very, very nice guy. The only guy from Belgium I've ever met, I think. Um, so yeah. it was it's a random memory that sticks out in my head. Cool. cool. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And, and since we're talking about Belgium, well, I actually have a, a girlfriend I've met here where I am, and she's from Belgium originally, uh, but through another country before she got here. But but since we're focusing on Belgium right now, you might very well meet somebody in the next few days who's from Belgium. Yeah, yeah, um, the, the reticular like activation that. system. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, Lynn, um, this has been great. Is there anything that you would like to talk about that we haven't had a chance to touch upon yet? Is there any, do you have any? Oh. Well, I want to thank you again, big time, for having thought of me to refer your friends to me. Yeah. Thank you so much. And yeah, it was, I mean, so here's the value of a referral. And I do get referrals. In fact, I haven't, until I started marketing for this group program that I've resurrected, I haven't marketed my business in years, which mm -hmm. is testament to when you grow on a really strong foundation. You know, then you don't always have to keep doing a ton of work. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, so anyway, the, the fun thing with your friend is uh, we had this conversation and, 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 you know, it was it was just fun. Like he felt he knew me mm -hmm. thanks to being referred by you. You know, he felt he, he knew me when we we're talking, you know, so easily together. And yeah. then I I said something about, you know, well, you know, so if you, if you like what you're hearing today, I think I can help you with your business. So what, the, so the next step is, do you want to, you know, like bring your vehicle that's spitting and sputtering into, <laughs> my, into my mechanics workshop and I'll put it up on the hoist and take a look at it and, you know, open the hood and, and, We'll see if I really can help you or not, but I guarantee that when you invest in this diagnostic assessment, that you will get at least a 300% ROI on it, even if you don't work with me ongoingly. And he said, okay, yeah, I've got my credit card sitting here. I wonder when you're going to ask for it. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, fine. So anyway, even in that, he said, Lynn, I knew I wanted to work with you as soon as you said, hello, you just have that, you, you just like ooze that that something like like confidence in what I do, but also it was this friendliness. Was I shouldn't say quoi. Yeah, I je ne sais quoi exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so anyway, we've been working together ever since. Well his biggest problem, I can share this with everybody because his biggest problem is the biggest problem that 80% of the people with whom I've been speaking over the last four months or six months, maybe that I've been marketing. And the biggest problem out there is people finding people for your company. So they will call it that problem. Oh yeah. They will call it. Uh, I can't find enough skilled labor. Yep. So I encourage people to back it up a bit and, and it, well, it reminds me of years ago, I was sitting at a dinner table, you know, those round tables for eight sure. in a conference room. It was an association gathering. And there was this guy, older guy, uh, you know, older than I am now anyway. And he's complaining about not enough people. So this is, I'm talking like, oh, nine or oh, eight, maybe. Wow. And he's talking about how he can't find enough people. It's been like this for a long time. Anyway, I said, well, how long have you had this as your biggest challenge or whatever? You know, he's talking to the other guys. He's complaining. I'm kind of turning the language around a little bit. For how long? And he said, five years. And I said, oh, so do you hire like people who have a good attitude and then you train them to be your apprentices and help them go through the process? So he was either electrical or mechanical contractor. And he said, no, I'm looking for skilled labor. 
Mm-hmm. I said, oh, I'm just thinking that if you'd hired people five years ago, they'd have all their tickets in their pocket and they'd be your skilled labor today. Mm-hmm. And the guys around the table laughed and and laughed at th- this guy was not happy with me, but this, <laughs> guy, <find> that funny. <laughs> this guy can see it as those guys are laughing at him. But laughter is the body's mechanism for releasing stress. Uh-huh. So that told me that all those guys were feeling the stress of, oh my God, I'm in the same boat. And that's just so freaking logical. How could I not even think of it myself? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But because I was speaking to the one, they were able to deflect that. You know? yeah. So that's my message still today. Still today. Are you going to be in business five years from now? If not, okay, don't bother. Let's look at something else. We'll we'll do something else. So, so then you're going to pay them, you know, maybe 50, 75% more than than what you're willing to pay because they they are who you want right now. So then your customer pays for everything, right? So it doesn't matter what you're paying your people. Mm-hmm. You just have to convince your customer, convince, I don't like that word, but you're going to have to prove to your customer that they are going to get the solution to Mm -hmm. their problem. And they're going to get more in use value than what they're going to give you in financial value. That's all. So you pay your people more. But this this, uh, person you referred to me, thank you so much, his (laughs) biggest problem was didn't have enough people. And he needed a lot of people immediately well within that month so we have three coaching sessions a month Mm -hmm. but we had had the diagnostic first so in the diagnostic we didn't dig too much into that I just saw that yeah this is this is clearly you know one of his biggest challenges or his biggest but I saw other challenges that were impacting that as well anyway so then we had three coaching sessions and by that third one he had hired, so this is all inside of a month, he had hired 12 people for the field. He had hired a key person to be his operations manager to relieve him of so many busy tasks. Uh And he had hired an assistant for his administrator. So she was his executive assistant or whatever you might want to call that position. No, she was the administrator of his company and (laughs) she was burning out and she has little children and she was always having to be there. And his company had grown around him by so much that he hadn't realized it. He hadn't realized it. So looking at it through my eyes, he was seeing like, Oh my God, I've got a much bigger company than I thought I did. Yeah. And here is this poor young woman. I don't want to burn her out. I mean, uh-huh. we're at risk of getting sick uh-huh. when when we're at this risk of burnout. Well, what the heck's burnout? Well, it could come in the form of a heart attack. Have we never heard of a 40-year-old having a heart attack? Of course we have. Sure. It could sure. it could come in the form of any kind of, of health ailments and what would he do if she wasn't there you know so anyway he hired all these people 12 13 14 people wow. and he couldn't find anybody before we talked yeah. he couldn't find anybody he didn't know he was ready for a right hand man you know for an operations manager he didn't he didn't know that he knew he needed the person but he didn't know he was ready for the person uh-huh. and his head imagine his overhead his overhead has grown in leaps and bounds and it was scary each yeah. time we made these decisions it yeah, was see, hiring hiring 14 people is not that's no laughing matter that's that's mm-hmm. those are your expenses go way 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 up and they look like overhead right And so I help him look at what overhead really is. These people need to bring money in to your company. These people need to cover their salary plus. And then some. (laughs) Why? Yes. (laughs) And so by looking at it properly, then you get to see. Okay. So the assistant to his administrator I mean, any any accountant in the land, in any land, will argue all of this with me. And yet, 
an accountant, there aren't too many, but the accountants who will sit with me and listen, they go, no, you're right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, so the assistant, you could say, okay, well, she is overhead. He's paying her and she's not bringing jobs in to cover her salary, et cetera. But she's getting, getting program or mm, systems. She's, she's creating systems that he's thinking up that are bringing in new business faster. I was going to so, say, if she's freeing up space for, for, for him. Then, she's then... freeing up space for her, for his administrator. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 So the, the administrator is now able to do the things that only she can do as, as you know, the, the best in the company sort of thing. But right. these other things, they weren't even thought of before we were working together. Now imagine him loading that onto his already busy administrator. Yeah. So, so this other young woman is, is putting together this thing that she's not bringing the new customers in, but they've got a story. It, it's telling a story uh -huh. of, of what their challenge is. Uh -huh. This is a job we did just like the one we're going to do at your place if you hire us on. And this is what their problem was. This is how we went through it. This is what happened along the way. And this is where they are. And this is how much money they have saved for the lifetime of that piece of machinery. Yeah. Millions and millions and millions, right? So now it's, it's all in a nice little story. So you don't have to, because it's hard for them to see the type of work that they do. It's yeah. hard for the customer to see that it's going to pay for itself. Yeah. Especially many times over. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's what this one young woman is doing. And not only that, Michael, but she has a sense of humor about her that makes everyone in her presence laugh. She'll just say, he, he sent me, he sent me a, an email that she had sent to him as an example, you know, it just like a belly laugh, little yeah. line. He sent it to me. I went, oh my God, I love it. So it, it's that sort of thing. So she's injecting laughter into this busy, stressful uh -huh. um, uh, a company, but I don't want to say it's not the company. It's the, uh, it's the energy, you know, like the go, go, go. We got to, we got to get this done fast and that sort of thing. And so she's bringing in these teeny little moments of laughter release because laughter is the body's mechanism for releasing stress. Yeah. And without any of them knowing this, she just has this, this ability to do this. That's and great. then his, his operations manager is bringing new clients in already bringing in new jobs and that's all in less than well maybe it's six months now but this was in less than six months and if you can have a high-end ticket bringing in his salary plus an roi inside of six months i think that's a huge win yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's awesome so, that's really good to hear and i, I love yeah. that like, i mean the the laughter thing um it at the face on the face of it, it sounds very small, but that's just like unquantifiable exactly. stuff. That's just, that's that's the that's the what do you call it? The you know the the, the human factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's like the icing on the cake. It's the fluff. Yeah. It's yeah. the sparkles. They're the sparkles on the cake. That's okay. <laughs> I like that. The the it's just fine with the icing. The cake is just fine without the sparkles. Uh -huh. now you get sparkles. Now you yeah. get sparkles too. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Those 12, those 12 for the field that he got. I think yeah. there were two. I think there were two, maybe, who, you know, were the catch and release type. Okay. And this is another thing is people will hire people and hang on to them for way too long. I heard somebody where I was speaking a few years ago, but where I was speaking, this other person was speaking on a topic that caught my attention for my clients. So I sat in and listened on it and I went, oh my God, I'm as guilty as, as his statistics. <laughs> <laughs> you hire somebody and you know within the first two months that they're not going to work out, but you don't release them for nine months. And it was, I knew it. I knew it with in the second month. And yet the guy was there nine months before I released him. So yeah. I was statistic, but with, you know, our mutual friend, yeah. he released these two guys. They were like catch and release. Yep. 
They That's said they're, they're all that plus a bag of chips and they weren't. So he was able to let them go where he would have hung on to them longer because we do. Yes, we do. Yeah, I've got a hard time with that myself. And, and you always, you, you know, you, you, we've all heard it. Every entrepreneur knows hire slow, fire fast. We've heard it before. We've read it in books. And it's so, it's just harder to do. Well, you know what I mean? A like, human factor. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just harder to, to do. It's, it's easier to say than it is to do. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, good for him. That's great. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah, so we're having, we're having a lot of fun together. We really are. Yeah. I love it. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Lynn, where can our listeners and viewers connect with you online? Oh, uh, on LinkedIn. I'm very prominent on LinkedIn these days. I'm very proud of myself too for, for having that, you know, stick with it factor mm -hmm. working well. Um, yeah, my website is MLJ, like Mary Lynn Jacob, MLJ international.com is my website and on linkedin i'm lynn jacob l-y-n-n-e jacob like in the bible awesome and we will of course post uh links to that on the show notes page as well um gosh anything else i'd love to hear a song before we part <laughs> I, keep looking at guitar. I come from a family of so cowboy boots and guitars i tell you what i will i will make i will make a, i will make a deal with you i'll make a promise to you okay if you come back for a third episode i will play a song <laughs> you got it <laughs> i just uh so incidentally i just uh picked up a guitar again for the first time in years oh. um, so i don't know if i have the the hand the finger strength to get through an entire song right now <laughs> I love I'm, that I mentioned it. I've been thinking it the whole time. It's like, oh, you know, I love that. I love that. And I just, but anyway, I didn't say anything. I'm so glad that. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm actively, I'm taking lessons right now and I'm practicing, you know, 30, 30 to 60 minutes a day. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the fingers are still, we're still, we're, we're, we're getting back into it. So yeah. if you come back for a, for a third round on the podcast, we'll, we'll play a song. Good stuff. I'm looking forward to it. Yes. Awesome. I'm very much looking forward to your invitation. Sweet. Okay, thank you so much, Michael, for inviting me yet again. It, yeah. It's such fun to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. and to oh, Kevin as well. Like, yeah, like old friends. Awesome. Yeah, I know it's always it's always a pleasure having you on, which is why we invite you back. <laughs> well, thank you. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much. I hope uh, you know. Hopefully, I'll be able to refer some more clients to you as well. Oh, uh, I would love that. Yes, and tell me who, who. Am I going to see where I'm going to think of you? Tell me who I can refer to you. Yeah. I mean, so Boxer, you know, we work with coaches and consultants are our, our, our primary. We have, we have three big services that we do. The main thing that we do is social media marketing um, where we take, you know, we, we take, if, if you spend three minutes recording a, a little snippet of some video on your phone we'll take that and turn that into posts and post it throughout the week for you on all your social media platforms from linkedin to instagram to whatever so that's one thing that we do we also do search engine optimization for your website if you get lots of traffic to your website um, if you sell things on your website that can be quite useful um, booking discovery calls that sort of thing and then the third uh, thing that we do very very well is branding and messaging and that's kind of a, a workshop, a done with you workshop where we'll go, we'll work with you to, to, to work on your, your branding and your messaging. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. I see. So, if you know, any other coaches that, that are interested in that kind of stuff, or if you yourself find your, you want to do more social media stuff, sounds like you're killing it on LinkedIn. Um, uh, then... Well, you see, I, the, the thing is with my business, where I am, I said, I, I hadn't marketed in years and it was sure. great. And... And now it's just because of this program. I And the reason I'm doing the program is because I really feel that I received a message yeah. to do this. Yeah. And so when I reached out, when I started and I reached out last spring, I found that, that so I only took people out of my many thousand database whom I could see in my mind's eye, only people I knew, right? And 20% of them 
Yeah. They didn't reach, you know, and then they don't have the email address or whatever. 20%. Uh-huh. Now uh-huh. that's not unusual, but it's sad. 20% of these businesses didn't make it through the lockdowns, you know? Uh-huh. And that's fear because in my industry, it's only fear. It's only fear. Yeah. They got in fear and I mean, they died. There was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of building during COVID because bank rates were were dead low. <laughs> yeah. And and today the 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 construction industry is the hottest. Yeah. It's just the hottest, you know, and there aren't enough people and you know they've got challenges and and the clients I had we continued through covid uh-huh. and or or whatever, you know, the, the whole shenanigans and uh-huh. in the very beginning um, one of my clients said, I, I don't even, it's like, I, do, I can't even see three years out. That's what it was. I can't even see three years out. I don't even know. I mean, the, the problems we're going through right now, and we don't even know yeah. what the world's going to be like in three years. And, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, he bought into it. You see, this is the thing is like, there are two sides of the fence and nobody knows which side I'm on. And it doesn't matter which side they're on. Uh, it's just business. Forget all that stuff. It's just business. But I said, okay, how about if you create a three month vision? Uh huh. And he did. Start and there. And then he was able to get back at it. Yeah. Because it wasn't this like big, like, you know, we don't know. The sky is falling. You know, <laughs> the sun might not come up next month. I don't know. You know, so three months, three months. Yeah, he could see. He could see that even if it continued with what was going on in that very, very moment, you know, right at the beginning, yeah. it, it it could continue for three months. So then how was he going to get through it and all that stuff? And, and it had a, a huge impact on a lot of businesses for, I'm going to say, six months. Well, they did a lot of work in schools. Uh-huh. And, and so they couldn't get in to maintain them and, you know, stuff. And then they... They had to get in it, you know, the schools needed it. So then they'd have to go at night and on weekends and it took twice as long. And I said, remember, the customer pays for everything. You don't eat it. You don't eat, you know, your guys twice as many hours and stuff like that. Forget it. Anyway, so that was that was the whole thing is that the challenges are just different. Still challenges. Yeah. They just look different. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. There's always always going to be unknowns, no matter what's what's going on. And you can't, you know, one thing that, you know, one of my first mentors and coaches taught me very early on is you can't, you can't cry over who gets elected president. Right. And that, (laughs) that's, 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 that's a metaphor for, for stuff you can't control. Right. As a business owner, as a business owner, it doesn't matter. There's always going to be unknowns. There's always going to be stuff you can't control. Um, so just focus, you know, on what you're able to control. Yep, exactly. And, and I bring it right down to the kitchen, Mm -hmm. you know, what's the point in crying over spilt milk? Sure. (laughs) Clean it up. Yeah. Yeah. Like the baby crying over it because they spilled it. Okay, well, why are they crying over the spilt milk? It's because their parents have been freaking out when little things like that happen. And that's why the toddler is yeah. scared and crying because they spilled their milk, you know? So, yeah, it's... We just uh, we just pull the dogs over and have the dogs clean it up. <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> yeah, one of my... One, I have three grandbabies on one side with the eight-year-old. And then, and then I have one on the other side of these two are the and anyway, she has animals. It's like a, it's like a zoo kind of, and and how differently they grew up, and yet how similar they are, nonetheless. It's so funny, you know, because they're not from me, but grandchildren, right? And they have different, but but their mothers or sisters, you know. So they have so many similarities, and yet so different. So one had a chihuahua, and then like with the three of them, that chihuahua couldn't you know, couldn't clean up too much and be, uh-huh. and be full, you know, and the other one, and the funny thing is that even though the dogs would come over to clean it up, she had a habit. I'm just remembering it now. She had a habit with at two years old, maybe that she always would pick up a cloth 
and go clean things. If she spilled a drop of water, she would go clean it. If she spilled a drop of milk, she would go clean it. It's like, wow, <laughs> her with all these animals. So the house wasn't as clean as the other house that only had one, you know, and it was just funny. Just as you say, having the dogs clean it up. Her dogs would clean up the big messes, but she wanted she wanted to beat the dogs. That's what she was doing. Uh -huh. She were her sisters. And they, we, we talked about it like they were her big sisters. <laughs> That's funny. That's hilarious. Must have, been, must have been. Yeah. Good. Very good. Awesome. Sorry. Okay. Well, Lynn, I appreciate it. Um, again, thank you so much for, for making the time to chat with me. We love having you on next time. I'll pick that guy up. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm looking forward to it. I yeah. really am. Yeah. Until then, uh, thank you to again to all of our viewers and listeners as well. Of course, this podcast doesn't mean anything without you guys. So appreciate you guys spending the time with me. And Lynn, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Yes, we will. Thank you, Michael. Take Bye. care. Uh, now I got to figure out how to stop this. Okay, there we go.